Okay, so we're gonna get started. This is for the guac versus queso training. Um, Mike is gonna start us off um, talking about the recipes and a few new things for um, all full service. Uh, Mike, do you want me to start with the videos? Do you wanna just go ahead and talk to them really quick? Does Marina need to be on there? She's right here next to me. I'm here at 508 today. Mike, can you hear us okay? It helps if I press unmute. Um, <laughs> does everybody have the uh, recipes? All right, did you send those out, Lori? I can't hear you, Mike. I'm sorry. Recipes. Did you send out the recipes? Not yet. I haven't sent them out yet. Okay, so let's just go over the videos. We'll start the videos at a time. Okay. Can everyone see the screen okay? Yes. Yes. Mike, you want them to play continuously, or did you want to say anything about any of the recipes you're going? I'll just stop each one. We'll just make a comment on each one. Um, so I thought about what you said, Lori, about the having the that scoop, but the problem is, is that we're gonna it's gonna be exposed to the the other elements inside the in, inside the cooler. So I'd rather have them portioned so the chorizo doesn't pick up any other flavor. Um, what we want you guys to do is portion some of the um, portion the chorizo into portion bags. We'll get you the portion bags. They're about a penny each, so they're not they're half the cup cheaper than the portion cups. So we'll get those. Uh, they're six by nine bags, and they're just clear bags. Um, but yeah, portion the chorizo. It makes it a lot easier. You can keep it in the freezer and then just pull out like five or six bags a day or however you need. But just remember, it's already a cooked chorizo. So all we have to do is put it on the flat top. If it's thawed out, obviously it's going to cook. You're just heating it up. If it's frozen, it's going to take a little second longer because it's frozen. But it's a cooked product, so you can just put it right on top of the queso like that. You don't need to make a pan or anything like that. We don't know how many you're gonna sell. If you're selling a lot, then maybe have a pan, half a pan ready to go, and then just scoop it and put it right on the middle, like you would do the Rico's dip. But for now, let's get them portioned and just have them on your line. Any any questions for that? So, you know, vamanos to the next one. <laughs> Hi, 
this. The ballpark nacho is pretty simple. As you can see, it's just basically like you do the like at the ballpark, chili cheese nachos. Um, you have everything on the line for that, so you don't need anything extra to do. Was that pretty simple on that one? Yeah? Rico, anything? Two ounce ladle, but uh, I'll go double check. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next one. Okay, I guess they're going to be mixed a little bit. Um, so we are going to six scoops on that guacamole. We're adding the the thawed out mango. The mango cannot be frozen. That's a big one right there. Just remember, you you don't want to have it frozen. So as you can see on the guacamole, we're not adding the tomatoes on the recipe that Laurie's sending out, the guacamole that we normally make does not have tomatoes in it. We're going to keep it as a simple base for all the new wok LTOs, okay? Um, but we are going to add tomatoes for the combination plates to the guacamole. So just be careful how much you're making. You don't want to make too much with tomato because you're only using it for the combination plates. So let's just make sure that we start off with like a, a six pad, maybe a half six pad. You know your store, how much volume and how much uh, combination plates are going out. So we put a recipe also for that. So if it's a full uh, six pad, it's one cup, right, Rico? One two, cup. Two cups. I'm sorry, two cups of tomatoes. And, and one uh this basically if you make eight pounds recipe guacamole you divide it into uh two five pounders two four pounders or one four pounders and two two pounders uh two pounds takes one cup of uh tomatoes and four pounders takes uh two cups so yes and that's all in the recipe for the prep for the making the guacamole okay so make sure you don't go down and you see the mango guacamole coming out with tomatoes in it we don't want that we want to make sure we're making the ltos correctly okay all right Lori. And, uh, and that's also a recipe that i'm also going to include when i send them all out it's going to say prep guacamole for lto and it's going to have the portions as rico and mike have been saying whether you put two cups of tomato or four cups of tomato. So I do have a recipe for that for y'all. So it's coming out after the meeting. Hey, I have a question. So we're going to have two different kind of guacs on the line, one with no tomatoes and one with tomatoes? Yes. Can we just eliminate the one with tomatoes? I, I, I just know we're going to run into problems with that. Well, uh, Ruben, Ruben, the way, the way it's going to be, uh, you're going to make the guacamole recipe for out of tomatoes. Okay. You put them in the on the in the fridge here on the refrigerator. Now, if you going if you need more tomatoes on uh, more guacamole on the line, then you grab a pan, uh, a guacamole, and you add the tomatoes and you put them on the line. And then you still keep the one on the bottom for uh for the LTOs. For the LTOs, okay. But the, the, Ruben, the reason why we went back and forth just to have tomatoes or no tomatoes, right? But you're gonna lose use uh, yield off if we don't add tomatoes for the combinations, right? Sure, sure. So right. 
you use four pounds for the combination plates, you're going to go down to three pounds. So that's your food cost right there. And that's the only reason why we have two different guacamoles on the line. Okay. The plain and then the one for the combinations. Thank you. I just wanted to ask that question. So yeah. Oh, trust me. We went back and forth, Rico and I. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay, Lori. So you'll need spoons on the line for any of them because you're going to mix them all in just like that. <laughs> There's a recipe for the roasted poblano that will Lori will attach as well. Hey, Lori. Uh, Mario says he can't hear anything. Is there something you can do on your end, or is it just on his end? You have to turn the volume. Yeah, if it's in <laughs> reference to the video, I have yeah. it silenced in case Mike is talking over it because there is music to it. But I'm not sure if he can't hear what's like right now as we're talking. So I, I he texts me. I'm talking to him. Oh, okay. So that's right there. Is the Rosa Poblano. And that one is pretty simple. You can see how simple these guacamoles are easy to put together. You're basically mixing it and topping it to give that nice uh, appearance on top. Um, anybody have any questions with that? All right. And just remember the same deal with the corn. Don't put frozen corn on top of that guacamole. Make sure they pull out enough to have it for the LTO. That's nothing worse than taking a bite and then you're biting into frozen corn. I'm gonna, everybody knows, everybody with the company has fairly been here for a while, so everybody knows the Rico dip. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that one before. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Rico. Just kidding. It's all right, Ruben. No hard feelings. I'm assuming there's no questions for the Rico's dip when we can move on. And once again, we're mixing it inside the, he's putting the scoops in, but he's not gonna leave them into balls. He's gonna mix it with a spoon. So that it looks like it was just made, made fresh. See, we do add tomatoes to that, but look at that. We just added it to the top. That's why we don't want to use the, the other made already because we didn't mix it, the tomatoes inside. All we did was just place them right on top. And with the queso fresco, we were having issues, um, but uh, they came actually came in yesterday, so the queso fresco. So they're going to be shipped out, should be shipped out today and Monday. Or if not Tuesday, the latest, you'll get your queso fresco. It went from 3-6 to yesterday. Uh, we got lucky, so nobody has to go anywhere. It'll come right to the store. Mike, and how many pounds is and, and the cheese? I mean, how big is it? It's the wheel. Okay, so probably we, we're going to have to do cut that one in four pieces and then put them in simple bags or wrap it on PVC and put them in the freezer so that we only have, you know, one four at a time in the refrigerator. Great point, great point. So we don't have uh, much Wait. waste. Okay. 
You go ahead, Lori. And with the Serrano glaze, once we add it to there, we want to put it in and toss it um, right away. And then we want to just mix it in like that and take it right off. Because if you leave it on, it's going to become very uh, sticky and it's going to evaporate really fast. So we're just putting the sauce on just to heat it enough to put it on. No more than 30 seconds. Right. And then there's a queso fresco right there. So we're using our same portion of shrimp that we have on the line that we use for everything. Um, and then this, that serrano. Everybody has that serrano glaze now. So uh, that is a special order. So just ask Holly. Uh, it should be on your order guide. But if it's not, um, I'll take a look at it to make sure. But if you come to a point where you're getting low on it and it's a big seller, Make sure you get it from a Holly, uh, order from Holly, okay? Yes. Is the shrimp cut in half? It's the same shrimp, yes. Don't you guys have any shrimp pieces in the line at Monterey's? No, nobody nobody does. Well, besides the uh, the crawfish mix. Cut it. But I okay. believe, I believe we, we cut those shrimps in, uh, in three pieces. In the I can always update it to where it said you got to cut the cut the shrimp before I send out the recipe. Is that something you want me to do? Yeah, we'll have that, and then let's portion those. Um, again, we can portion those on the portion bag. There's another use for those. We can do the chorizo, and then we can put the portion. Uh, we can re-cut them, make like a few bags, three or four bags, and have them on the line. Okay, I'll make the adjustment and then send it out. That one's my favorite. That one is really good. Same deal with the toasted jalapenos. We do have a recipe for that. Remember that they need to crush the Cheetos when they put it on. You don't want them all whole coming on the plate. Any questions on the flaming pot? Guacamole? All right. So since the mango has big chunks on them, we're gonna need to slice them the big, bigger chunks that we have, just like that. And it's easier to do when the mangoes are frozen to slice like that. And then we'll put them in the dicer. Now, if they're small pieces that are not big chunks like that, then you can put directly right into the dicer and just dice it and they'll look the same like those because you'll see that you'll have to lost those little pieces in there mike i think yes. we do, they do need to defrost the mango before they dice because if you don't they're going to break those blades on the dicer okay all right
There's the prep for the jalapenos for the Cheetos. All right, any questions on that last one right there? Mike Rico, any feedback on that one? On the jalapenos? Yes, sir. I think um, I, I just sent you a text. I think you I think there's a problem. You might have put 10 minutes on accident. Yeah, I fixed it already on the on the recipe. Yeah. I fixed it. It's about two or three minutes, basically until it's pureed. It won't take that long. But I, I yeah. adjusted it on the recipe and then on the video it just says until it's pureed. Yeah, that's perfect. And 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 remember, I mean, you know, you know, some of the grills are hotter than the others, so it's going to have to take our, our adjustments to depending on the grill that we have. Some they're going to take less time. Some of them going to take more time to roast these peppers. Yes, we did the recipe over here at five oh eight today, and it took about about thirty minutes to char them. Um, fifteen, basically fifteen minutes on one side, fifteen minutes on the other side. And then to blend them about two minutes or so. Um, but on the recipe, it does say until it's charred. So it okay. depends on how hot the grill is. Yeah, I mean, be careful when that two minute to blend, because it depends on what type of uh, blender you have. If you have one of those brand new um, super blenders, I think it's not going to take two minutes to blend, you know? So you just want to make sure it's not chunky, chunky. That's hey, all. My question for you: um, Is there a difference on the grill, on the char broiler versus the fryer for those jalapenos? Well, you it's the flavor flavor profile. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Fraser? You've been quiet quiet all day. He's not even listening. <laughs> no, I'm here. I was just trying to find a button. <laughs> now that you found it? I found it. We're all good. No questions. Uh, <laughs> By the way, I'm still waiting on my trophy, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, we're working on it. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm good. Anything else, Lori? I uh, just wanted to make sure that we did let them know that moving forward guacamole whether it's with this lto or not guacamole recipe will be served on the rare bit dish and will no longer come with shredded lettuce yes that is correct great point so remember no more plates no more scoop no more balls if it's just a regular guacamole order just scoop out the six scoops blend it a little bit and then put tomato right on top and then serve it or you're going to put pico right on top and serve it one thing to remember is to mention to the servers is is it okay we especially the pico ones is the ones we heard the most is sometimes the guest doesn't like pico so uh if you don't want it coming back just make sure you the servers are mentioning to the guests that is it okay if we put the pico is a pico okay on top some guests might say, you know what, I don't want pico, or can you put it on the side? Or they'll say, it's fine, you know. Um, it's better to mention that 
especially to new people you'll know your regulars after a while they'll know what to do but um as far as that goes it's better than they coming back and say well they didn't want any pico on it did you mention it no well you know there you go I have a small question. Um, these appetizers only come in one size, right? They will be no small, medium. It's just one size, right? Correct. One size only in the black ramekin or a rare bit. And that, if you need more rare bits, make sure to just go to Ace Mart and purchase some more. Make sure you have your credit card. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get Rico to buy it. And if you guys have to put on a credit card, uh, just do a paid out or let me know or work something out to get your store the, the stuff you have. Don't want to put that pressure on you guys, but if you need some, just call me and we'll, we can work something out. All right. What's the expected rollout date? So I spoke to Kayla earlier today. They're looking for a March 1st rollout however um she wasn't able to join this meeting today but she is going to send out uh an email on monday so keep an eye out for that it should hopefully include the live date of march 1st or if it has changed then just kind of keep an eye out for her email and then hopefully she'll have a uh, shipping information for when the menus are going to be hitting the stores okay All right, any other questions on the recipes, the videos? Again, I will be sending those out um, after this meeting to all the store supervisors. And um, any questions on that? I don't. All right, thank you. And then, go ahead. No, go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, I was going to talk about front of house training. Okay, go ahead. All right, so for front of house training, we're going to do basically what, what's been done before, and I, I like that approach, is we're going to do a server tasting. I'm also going to do a quick video on that for maybe managers who haven't been around that long or can't remember that or never had a server tasting before in their career. So I'm going to be sending that out along with some talking notes on how to introduce the different um Quesos and guacs that we have, flavor profiles, how to describe it to guests who ask questions like, you know, which one's your favorite, which one, which one is not too spicy, what's kind of sweet, you know, because they all have different flavor profiles. So I have that working, and I'm also saying that out today as well. And I'll be uploading that video on the YouTube channel um, probably by Monday if I can get it done by today. Um, let's see here. So yeah, so um, I'm hoping that I'm pretty sure the bulk of y'all do know about the server tasting and how that goes. Um, but I will be providing some information on how to describe it. Make sure that your servers each get a chance to look at it, taste it, and that this um, notes I'm saying over to you guys just kind of post it somewhere in front of house that the servers can look at it as a quick reference guide, and they can write it down for themselves. And then also, was there a question? Okay, and then it's also recommended that the servers also see the, the videos as well on YouTube. Again, you saw how quick they were, and they're, used, they're about 45 seconds to maybe a minute long, so it doesn't take long at all for them to see it. It's going to give them a great opportunity to see how it's all made from start to finish. And of course, after they've tasted it and seen it themselves, they should be very well equipped on how to describe it to guests because they are the ones who deal with them the most and hopefully eliminate any problems, any dishes being sent back because it wasn't what the guest was expecting, that kind of stuff. So um, all of that I'll be sending out, but the servers will be required to see these videos that we just showed you. So it's for back of house and front of house, please.
So that's what I've got for um, front of house. And again, Kayla was going to join us, but she couldn't. But the live date as of today is March 1st. Um, but again, keep an eye out for her email on Monday. Okay, and that's what I've got. Um, and what about uh, pictures, Lori? Pictures? Yes, are we uh, we want everybody, Ruben, right? Lori, Ruben, we want everybody to take pictures so we could see what their stores are looking at, how they're making the food. Kind yeah, of like, like verification, kind of like we did with VDC, but in house. We'll we'll do it on WhatsApp. Doesn't hurt. I think so because I remember sometimes on the LTOs we used to do, they had the picture in front of them and it didn't look like it, you know. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I think that'd be good. By what? What's the what's the cutoff date that we want those done by, guys? What's a good date? I say let's have everybody submit it in the WhatsApp um, no later than next Thursday. That way, it gives a weekend crew to kind of work with it as well. For any uh, cooks that only work weekends, servers that only work weekends, you can use this weekend to start training them, and then you're given pretty much Monday to Thursday for anyone else who wasn't present so it gives you time gives the stores time to kind of watch videos make the make the recipes and to taste them and so forth but that's my suggestion but we can always change it hey Lori you said to have them turned in by the by next week on Thursday and we go live on the first yes ma'am so we're gonna go live on a Friday that's what they told me again that's as of today I'm not sure if Kayla will get an update by Monday and then send you guys an email with a different date. But as of today, she told me that March 1st is going to be the live date. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Ruben, Mike, Rico, are we good with Mar um, with Thursday, next Thursday being the cutoff? Again, if you can submit them as soon as possible, that's the idea. But you can submit on WhatsApp the pictures of your cooks making it. Yeah, sounds good. Perfect. And yes, just to confirm, this is a second LTO. I know currently our current LTO menu has the man versus fries on there. Um, that is still active. And then when this one comes out, this will be the second LTO as well. So it's not replacing the, the man versus fries one. Are there any questions regarding either the recipes, the uh, expectations for front of house, and when to submit kind of like a, a culinary verification for these uh, recipes? All right, I'm going to take that as a no. We all understood. All right, Mike, you have anything else? Rico, Ruben? I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. Okay, well, that's all I've got as well. I'll be saying out the recipe shortly today, so keep a lookout for that. Thank you. Thank Have you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you.